adding integers, inverse property of addition, additive inverse. This is lesson 1.2c. An additive inverse is the opposite of a number. It's the opposite across zero on a number line. Negative 2 and 2 are opposites. Negative 2 is the additive inverse of 2, and positive 2 is the additive inverse of negative 2. The inverse property of addition states that the sum of a number and its opposite, or additive inverse, is 0. Positive 1 plus negative 1 is equal to 0. Positive 2 plus negative 2 is equal to 0. Positive 3 plus negative 3 is equal to 0. So they make 0 pairs. If you remember from video 1.2b, we have a negative counter and a positive counter. We circle them. They make a 0 pair. They equal 0. Here we have two negative counters and two positive counters. We circle one negative and one positive to make a zero pair. We circle another negative and positive to make a zero pair. We have none left over. They're equal to zero. Same with negative three plus positive three. We have three negative counters, three positive counters. They make zero pairs. They equal zero. The sum of a number and its additive inverse is zero. This means when we add a number and its opposite, the sum will be zero. Positive five plus negative five is equal to zero. So here are the rules for adding integers. When we have the same sign for the add-ins, we add their absolute values and use their common sign for the sum. We have a positive two plus a positive four, they're both positive, the sum will be positive. We have a negative 2 and a negative 4, they're both negative, the sum will be negative. When we have different signs, we find the difference between their absolute values, use the sign of the add-in with the greater absolute value for the sum. We have a negative 3 plus a positive 5, they have different signs. We find the absolute value of negative 3, which is 3, the absolute value of a positive 5 is 5. And we find the difference between their absolute values, 3 and 5, and the difference is 2. We take the sign of the add-in with the greater absolute value. Positive 5 has a greater absolute value. It's positive, so our sum will be positive. For the inverse property of addition, the sum of a number and its opposite, or additive inverse, is 0. We don't need to use absolute value. We have a positive 6 plus a negative 6. They're additive inverses. They're going to equal 0. We have a negative 34 plus a positive 34. They're additive inverses. They equal 0. Here it's telling us to find the sum. We have a negative 15 plus a positive 5. Each add-in has a different sign. We find their absolute values. The absolute value of negative 15 is 15. It's 15 jumps from 0. And the absolute value of positive 5 is 5. It's 5 jumps from 0. Now we find the difference between their absolute values. The difference between a 15 and 5 is 10. We know to take the sign of the add-in with the greater absolute value, that would be negative 15. It's farther from 0. It's negative, so our sum will be negative. We have negative 10. The sum will have the same sign as the add-in with the greater absolute value. It's telling us to find the sum. We have a positive 29 plus a negative 29. Remember the parentheses help us see the sign of the negative add-in. These add-ins are opposites across zero on a number line. We can use the inverse property of addition for the sum of these additive inverses. The sum is 0. 29 plus negative 29 is equal to 0. And remember, we don't need to find their absolute values because they're additive inverses. Again, it's telling us to find the sum. We have a negative 12 plus a negative 15. They have like signs. They have a common sign. They're both negative. We find their absolute values. 
the absolute value of negative 12 is 12, the absolute value of negative 15 is 15, we add their absolute values, 12 plus 15 is equal to 27, and our sum will have the same sign as the add-ins. It will have the like sign. This is negative and this is negative, so our sum will be negative. It's negative 27. Do you remember from 4th, 5th, and 6th grade, the associative property of addition states that for all real numbers A, B, and C, the sum is always the same regardless of their grouping. We can add B plus C, get a sum, and add it to A for a total sum, and it will equal if we grouped A and B together, got a partial sum, and then added it to C. The grouping doesn't matter. Do you remember the identity property of addition states that a sum of zero and a number is that number? In addition, zero won't change a number's identity. When we add zero to five, five keeps its identity. It's still five. We can use the associative property of addition and the inverse property of addition to simplify problems for mental math. This will help us solve the problem in our head. We have a positive 2 plus a negative 6. We break apart the negative 6 into a negative 2 and negative 4. We can regroup using the associative property of addition and group the positive 2 and the negative 2 together. And then we can add the negative 4. The positive 2 and the negative 2 they're opposites. They're additive inverses. That's the inverse property of addition. We get zero. Now we add the negative four. The identity property of addition tells us the negative four is not going to change its identity. It's equal to negative four. We can solve real world problems that involve the addition of integers with unlike signs. That means they have different signs. Here's an example. The temperature was negative 2 degrees Fahrenheit in the morning and increased by 10 degrees Fahrenheit by the afternoon. We would know the temperature in the afternoon by doing negative 2 plus 10. That would be 8 degrees Fahrenheit in the afternoon. Here's another example. Sophia spent $8 for supplies to make a bracelet to sell for $20. Her profit will be the difference between her cost of supplies and the price she sells it for. What will be her profit? She spent $8 for supplies. She sold it for 20 That means we have negative $8 plus $20. We find their absolute value. The absolute value of negative 8 is 8, and the absolute value is 20 is 20. We find the difference between 8 and 20, which is 12, and we take the sign of the greater absolute value, which is a positive 20. So we have a positive $12. That's her profit. Now we're moving on to lesson 1.3. And the first part of that lesson is modeling integer subtraction. So remember, when there's different signs, find the difference between the add-in's absolute values. Then use the sign of the add-in with the greater absolute value for the sum. I hope you have a wonderful day and join me for the next lesson. Bye.